Okay, let's move on and keep on uh, looking at some image reconstruction methods. So this one came out in 2016 in the conference on winter applications and computer vision, and uh, it's doing image reconstruction using uh, sparse signal processing, sparse signal representation, You're using a what is called the sparse dictionary. Interesting about this work is that it showed that uh, um, there is no need to estimate motion for reconstructing the intensity. Right? The previous method that we saw, they were kind of um, uh, using some form of rotation uh, to, to guide the reconstruction, uh, and this uh, actually does not. And it's uh, still a pre-deep learning area. So it's doing a patch-based dictionary of events and it's creating or learning this dictionary from simulated data. Basically what they do then to reconstruct the intensity is that they take a sequences of event frames and we know this because we have seen before, they accumulate the events into some event frames with some time, uh, accumulation time, the positive and the negative, so the positive events and the negative events and then they pass them through some algorithm to estimate some coefficients uh, using some basis function. And these coefficients are they're multiplied or used to do a linear combination of um, the gradients in the x and y direction uh, in the dictionary. So these are the gradients in the dictionary to obtain the gradients of the patch. And then you do Poisson reconstruction plus inversion of, of the log um, to obtain the, the absolute intensity. And let's look at it with the video. So on the left are the, the events, uh, green, red, and, and yellow, whether they are positive, negative, or both. And on the right, you see uh, a video reconstructed from those events, right? And let me play it again. These are the events moving very fast. And on the right, you see reconstructed scene there was no need to estimate motion the camera was probably static <laughs> and there is no estimation of uh, of rotational motion whatsoever and it's all done using this um, sparse dictionary learning if you want to read more of, uh, in, of the paper then you can see in the details how is actually the dictionary computed and basically what they do is that they uh, simulate so they have um, an original image from a database, they resize it to the size of the DBS and they compute the gradient in the X direction, the gradient in the Y direction, and also the gradient in the time dimension to simulate events. And basically they stack this, uh, they divide these images into patches and stack them. And so you have the gradient in X, the gradient in Y, the positive events and the negative events for every patch. And then they do some clustering using KSVD which is a generalization of the k-means clustering method. So it's an unsupervised uh, learning method to obtain um, the dictionary, dictionary of gradients and a dictionary of events. And basically at inference time, what happens is that you, you will get the events, you will compute the, you will use the dictionary of events, find the coefficients that you need to multiply the dictionary with to obtain the, the events. And then you use those same coefficients to multiply the uh, the dictionary of the in terms of the gradient, and that will give you the this x uh, and y gradients, which you can then uh, integrate using Poisson. Um, and if we look at the top ten uh, atoms in this so-called KSVD, these are the the patches, right? These are nine by nine probably patches, and then you see the gradients in the X, the gradient in the Y direction, and the positive and the negative events. Yeah. Well, more details are, are in the paper, but basically this is kind of pre-deep learning, unsupervised, it's doing k-means clustering, and there is no need to do motion estimation. Okay, then also in 2016, now we move to this uh, work that it's on simultaneous optical flow and uh, intensity estimation from an event camera, CBPR, uh, from the group of Imperial College. And yeah, basically what they do is they do a joint optimization of on two quantities, image reconstruction, so 
an, an optical flow to explain a volume of events, and the volume of events is represented as a voxel grid. So it's more relaxed than SLAM methods because they just need to estimate op the optical flow. Um, therefore, it works on dynamic scenes with little assumptions about motion. There's, yeah, there's no SLAM involved. We just need to know the apparent motion of, in the scene. And that's kind of represented here. So the apparent motion is this bottom right image, is the optical flow. The color is the, the direction of the flow and the amount. So it's between black and, and then the color is the, is the magnitude. On the top left are the input events here, just represented as event frames. And on the bottom left is the reconstructed intensity. So how are these two quantities computed? Well, they need to solve a variational optimization problem. And that's written like this. You want to minimize with respect to the flow U and the intensity uh, reconstructed L um, this quantity. So we are minimizing a functional that integrates in time and in space, so in a volume. Um, you will try to have some smoothness terms to say that the flow is smooth uh, and the temporal the, the spatial derivatives are also smooth. Then there is a term called the uh, optical flow term. Also, it's the brightness constancy equation. We can see that basically this is saying that uh, the temporal derivative of L should be as small as possible. And this one means that it's the L1 norm. And then there are two terms, uh, the no event term and the event term. Basically, this is the event uh, triggering condition, and this is the absence of that. They are basically saying that because we are discretizing the volume, it could happen that um, a cell has some amount of events, and we don't want mm, nothing to be there or too many oscillations. The general idea is that this is a variational optimization problem and you are jointly estimating two quantities, the brightness. Um, so an image L, well, in this case, uh, a whole volume and the flow that best, that minimize this, this value to explain a set of events. And these sets of events are kind of represented with a voxel grid. And let's take a look at the video. <clears throat> So this is just to remember what is optical flow. So each pixel uh, will have a color in one of the plots and the direction is shown as color and the velocity as brightness as shown in the color wheel. On the left is just for comparison, the camera image, this is not shown. And then in the middle, you see the reconstructed intensity and on the right, the optical flow. This is basically a method that says that flow and brightness, they can be computed together and they help each other. And as you see, it works on dynamic scenes or in this case, static, but before it was dynamic. And uh, yeah, like this is a dynamic scene. Objects are moving and we are not estimating the camera motion. Just just estimating the optical flow. Good. Also in 2016, we have um, <clears throat> this method called reconstruction using manifold regularization. And this is a method from the group in, uh, in Graz, in Austria, that it also does not need to estimate motion like BAD was from, so two works ago. And uh, reconstruction is posed as a variational uh, problem. So in this case, variational nonlinear image denoising. And they use uh, something called the time surface that we've, we've seen before. So the timestamps of the event to guide the denoising. Basically, the idea is that there are some input events here on the left. And um, we can use the timestamp of the events and we, we represent them in kind of space and time. Time here is the vertical axis. We can use this surface uh, or this time map um, for regularizing um, 
for, for guiding the image denoising to obtain a reconstructed image like this one. So what is this variational nonlinear image denoising problem? It's written like this. So we will obtain the reconstructed image as the function f that minimizes the sum of two terms, the data fidelity term that comes from the events. Uh, so trying to minimize the distance between the, the unknown and the image obtained by direct integration of the events. And then there is a second term that enforces or tries to um, make the solution F have some regularity, have some smoothness. That's the regularizer. Typical variational problem. And yeah, the solution you try to optimize this and you will get the, the image. So 2D uh, function. Let's look at the yeah, to obtain the reconstructed image. Let's look at the video. And on the background, you see the output from a standard camera. On the top left, you see the raw events. Uh, on the right, you see the event manifold. So bright means that it was recent in time, and black means that it was far away in the past. And in the middle, you see the reconstructed image. Would you see that while the reconstruction is, is, is not perfect uh, because there are still some artifacts, you can see how the camera is moving because there are some traces, uh, some artificial edges coming from, uh, from the camera motion. Yet it's, it's quite good. It shows that uh, you can do this with a, a model-based approach, so variational. Uh, at very high speed. I think they do use a GPU to do it at three or 500 frames per second. Um, and there is no need to do, um, to, to do motion estimation or learning. Quite an interesting work. Okay, and uh, let's review a couple more uh, works. So this, uh, this also appeared in 2016. Uh, it's called event based six stuff. Uh, uh, SLAM with using three parallel filters and the paper is here at the bottom. So real time 3D reconstruction and six degrees of freedom tracking with an event camera presented at ECCB. And it's the extension of what we've seen before the paper in 2014, um, mosaicing and tracking. And here basically there are three Kalman filters running in parallel. One, uh, yeah, each filter needs the output from the other one. And there are three, right? Tracking, which is basically now doing a sixth of uh, estimation of the camera pose using an extended Kalman filter. For the motion model, they use a constant position model. And they use the, the intensities reconstructed um, to kind of make a prediction of the contrast and compare it to uh, the the value that it should have to update the pods and to compute this difference of intensities you need to to know the intensity and you also need to know kind of where the point in the image plane is in 3d so you need to also know that then there is the the filter that maybe we are most interested in in this uh, chapter which is the intensity reconstruction and and basically, this is a pixel-wise EKF, like in 2014. And they, there is some variational reconstruction that it's a robust version of Poisson using some Hubble norm. So this is two filters. And the third filter is doing a 3D reconstruction. So it takes tracking. It takes so the camera motion. It takes the a map of intensities. And it tries to estimate. Uh, for every pixel uh, in a keyframe, they try to estimate uh, inverse depth using contrast. Yeah, so it takes the previous uh, information from the other two filters to uh, estimate a prediction of the contrast and compare it to the value that it should have to then compute an innovation and guide the Kalman filter. And on the left, you see um, kind of the output of one of these two filters, uh, sorry, the, the filter, the intensity reconstruction is on the top left. And on the bottom right, you see the same box that is a texture box and um, kind of uh, represented in, in 3D 
for the points that were we were able to reconstruct the, the depth and the color. And not surprisingly, these points where depth is more reliable to reliable to estimate are uh, points at uh, at edges. It's difficult to reliably estimate depth at points in normal homogeneous regions. Let's look with the video how it works. We can see the filters at the output of the filters at the bottom. So the events are on the left. Uh, this is the estimated gradient of the keyframe and the reconstructed intensity. On the right is the depth. Right? So the, the two the output of the two filters are this is the depth filter and this is the intensity reconstruction filter. And the camera pose we can see it with this frames in the top video. So let's look at it again. See how it starts from nothing and then it builds up. It takes some time to converge, but it's building up evidence of um, of what's happening in the scene. Right? From the events, we are moving the camera uh, and we are getting better and better at reconstructing the intensity and the depth. Represented with these colors. Red means close and blue means far away. And then we plot this 3D reconstruction in 3D uh, on the top and we move around. That was for a single keyframe and then we can do this for a different variety of scenes. This is just to show that it works um, different scenarios. And because we are reconstructing here a single keyframe, then we try not to make, we still try to make motions in 3D, but not very far away from that keyframe. Yeah. Okay, also another work that was doing uh, SLAM, but did not require 3D reconstruction, yet it showed that um, the output of the system, so in this case, this kind of sparse uh, map, map of um, well, semi-dense map of of points, edges, and uh, and the location of the camera. So with these two information, then you can combine and uh, obtain. Uh, you can project them on a keyframe as well, and then do Poisson integration and obtain. Um, sorry, reconstructed image. So it's not needed for a SLAM, but it can be done with the output of, of the visual odometry SLAM system. Here it shows in this video how the map is being built as the camera is moving. Um, so on the bottom left, you see the alignment. So these blue and green, when they are aligned, this edge map means that the camera tracking is working well. On the bottom right, these are the input events. So the grayscale frames are not used, only the red and blue dots. And in the middle, you see these uh, brightness images being reconstructed. And they work even when we have dynamic objects or when we turn the lights off and on. This is an HDR. So this is just to show that it, it can be done, even though it's not uh, needed for 3D. Uh, tracking and mapping, so for solving visual odometry. Yeah, that's uh, basically it for now.